What is going on everyone? It's Sean with another Tesla video and in this one I'm going to be talking about Tesla's upcoming electric semi-truck that they'll be coming out with. In fact, if you don't know and you've been living under a rock, they'll be making a semi-truck event on the 16th of November 2017, which I will be going to. And I actually, I will be live streaming that and have created a, um, a set the date on my YouTube channel. So you can actually go to that and set a reminder, have it remind you when I go live. So if you are interested in that, interested in seeing some behind the scenes look at the event, and I'm anticipating getting a test ride in that, Go ahead and, and set a reminder, and that way you won't forget. But before I do that, I want to invite those that are watching this video and are not subscribed to hit that subscribe button. This channel is perfect for those that love Tesla, love following what they're doing, and love hearing from an owner's point of view of owning a Tesla. And if you are in the market for an S or X new or, or inventory, please use my referral code down below. It's going to save you $1,000 through the end of this month, October 2017, which in, actually ends in a day from now when I'm recording this. And it's going to get you free supercharging for life. You just have to use the promo code before the end of the year or the referral code before the end of the year. So thanks so much for doing that. And let's get into the meat of this video. For this video, I want to break down some of the things that I think are important to know about semi-trucks, about the Department of Transportation, which regulates commercial truck drivers, and some of my predictions for what the semi-truck will be and what types of things it will have. So I'm going to cover a few things. So I'm going to cover DOT regulations, distance or range, battery range, or gasoline range. I also want to talk about charging, the charging network, potential charging network, drag coefficient or aerodynamics, as well as the cost to maintain a semi-truck. So let's dive into DOT regulations, as we call them here in the United States. They're basically a, a federal agency that governs truck drivers, commercial people who have commercial licenses. And as a truck driver driving a large vehicle, you have rules that you have to follow by in order to maintain your commercial driver's license for semi trucks. So let me let me tee this up by saying that I had a really great opportunity to talk with a close family member who's been in the business driving trucks for 21 years and he's been a he was a wealth of knowledge when i had a chance to talk with him over the weekend about all of these things his experience some of the dot rules and so on so i'd like to say thanks to him for 30 minutes over the phone talking about some of these things so i could act like I've got a clue about what I'm talking about. Now, I don't know everything about the uh, truck driving industry. So if you're in the industry and you're watching this and I do misspeak on something, feel free and put it in the comments. But some of the highlights of DOT regulations when it comes to truck drivers driving trucks, you've got an eight day or 70 hour Per week limit so you can only drive 70 hours within those eight days if you hit that 70 hours before the eight days then you have to stop so you do have a limitation there with how much you can drive in a single week but as far as each day you've got a total of 14 hours that you can drive in a single day and you can only drive eight hours continuously. So once you hit that eight hour limit, you have to take a 30 minute break. This means that you can't be doing any work for the company, for the truck driving company, or you can't be checking your, your tires or you know checking the air pressure or oil or anything like that. You have to be doing something else. You can go take a walk, you can sleep, you can watch a movie, you can go into the truck stop and grab a bite to eat, whatever it is, but you have to take a 30 minute break every eight hours. So that's that's at least one break in a 14 day 
period, day, in which you're allowed to drive. So these regulations will actually dictate some of my predictions when it comes to things like batteries, charging, charging stations. So I'm looking forward to get in, getting into that. Now let's talk a little bit about distance. How far does a gasoline-based semi-truck go? You've got typically a low end of a 100-gallon tank up to a 200-gallon tank. And generally speaking, you can go between 500 miles on a 100-gallon tank to 1,000 miles on a 200-gallon tank. My expectation here is with Tesla that they'll at least need to compete with existing technologies and abilities of a gasoline tank. I don't expect for them to come out with a product that is below what companies and drivers are already used to. So I'm going to expect to use that as a standard. And I wouldn't be surprised if Tesla exceeds that standard in the industry. Let's talk a little bit about the range of a Tesla semi-truck. I'm going to go ahead and, and say that Tesla is going to come out with two versions. One that's going to be short haul for short haul trips around the city and a long haul battery that will allow drivers who go on long distances from city to city or state to state to go that long distance. And let's just use that basis here. I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna put it out there and say that these two battery sizes will allow drivers to go 500, mi 500 miles and 1,000 miles. Currently right now, what Tesla has in their, their, their consumer automobiles, their largest battery in the Tesla Model S 100D is a 335 mile battery. So we're talking, you know, 150 to 175 miles addition to compete with that low end short haul 500 mile battery pack for a Tesla electric semi truck. So that's not too far of a stretch, but a thousand miles would be twofold that and I think that's a pretty big stretch. I'll be really curious to see if it's possible for them to fit enough of a, a large enough of a battery pack that will allow the semi truck to go a thousand miles. Now a couple of things that, that, that I'll add here. I don't think that the, the battery pack has to be bigger per se. It's going to be bigger I think to get to a thousand miles but what if the semi-truck is actually more efficient? Maybe similar to what we've seen with the Model 3 where the drag coefficient is better than the Model S and Model X and the battery technology is newer and can pack more power in it. So if Tesla takes some of those technologies that they have developed with the Model 3, like the motor that, that has been said to have been used in the Model 3, they'll be transferring to the semi-truck, and a more efficient semi-truck than what's out there, I think that they could potentially get that to that thousand mile mark. So two battery sizes, a short haul and a long haul battery size. And I'm just gonna go with the 500 and 1000 because I think that at a very minimum, they need to meet that industry standard. I am hoping that they exceed that because it would really generate some interest. All right, so the next topic of conversation is going to be charging. Now, I've watched a few videos on this and a few videos by some well-known YouTubers that produce Tesla content. And one of the, the most popular theories, in fact, the primary theory that I'm hearing people talk about is Tesla going to need to needing to come out with a fast charging semi truck uh, infrastructure throughout the United States. And currently you can charge a, an S or an X at their existing supercharger network in about a, an hour and 20 minutes. So it takes about an hour and 20 minutes to do a full charge at uh, Tesla's existing supercharging network. Now, Elon has implied on Twitter that 
they have technology available for greater than 350 kilowatts of power of, of, of charging. And I don't know if I see this being implemented in their consumer products, their S, X, and 3, but I can definitely see this for a semi truck that's bigger, has bigger batteries, and can just take more power. I also don't see Tesla allowing semi trucks to charge at existing supercharging stations because they're just the stations aren't built for that. They're not built for a semi truck plus a trailer to come and install or come in and charge. What I could see is Tesla leveraging these truck stops, which are already built for semi trucks to come in and, and fuel up, to have a secondary area or location where they can come in and, and, and do fast charging. Now, the challenge with this is that bigger battery packs will mean longer charging. And if a truck driver has to take a break for 30 minutes, and maybe they, they can only afford to take a break for 30 minutes because they need to get that, that um, load that they're hauling to wherever it needs to be. An hour and 20 minutes is going to be very confining if a truck driver only wants to take a 30 minute break. So I think that there's going to be a challenge there to do fast charging for semi trucks. I could see fast charging I could see companies investing into fast charging at their locations where the semi trucks are parked when they're not being used so that they could charge overnight. And this is probably most ideal for your short haul semi trucks, the ones that go on day trips, you know, they leave early in the morning and then they're back at the facility at the company's uh, parking lot by the end of the day. That makes complete sense to have fast charging or even what we know now as destination charging at actual locations. So companies would in addition to investing into uh, Tesla's electric semi truck, they'd also invest into charging stalls in the company parking lots. So what's my solution if supercharging, if Tesla installing fast charging around the country for semi trucks is not reasonable or feasible rather? I think that Tesla could actually reintroduce their battery swap te technology. Do you remember Tesla made a big deal about this. They did a whole event about this technology, how battery swapping is faster than filling up an actual vehicle. And during the event, Tesla compared filling up a, an Audi sedan versus a battery swap with a Model S. And the battery swap was actually faster than filling up a tank of gas in the Audi sedan by a minute or two. So this, I think, we could see the introduction of battery swaps for long-haul trucks. So if a truck is going from, let's say, California to New York, perhaps Tesla will install these battery swap stations where companies can pay a, a monthly fee to Tesla to just have unlimited battery swaps, or maybe there's some sort of pricing structure, but I think this could be a solution to keeping vehicles on the road and within that 30 minute break that drivers have to take. Now, with, with an average uh, tank of, of gas in a semi truck, this fa close family member said that typically it takes him between 15 and 20 minutes to fill up that tank. And that's if there's no lines at the truck stops. So again, I think that Tesla's going to either meet that industry standard of how long it takes to fill up a, uh, a, a tank of gas on a truck or exceed it. So let's say that it only takes two minutes, three minutes to do a battery swap on a semi truck. You're now allowing drivers to fill up and either be on the road or fill up and do something else so that they can actually take a take a rest. All right, the next topic is drag coefficient, the aerodynamics of a car. And I wanna set Tesla's existing cars as a standard for 
what their semi truck could be. Now, with a typical semi truck, I found ranges between 0.60 and 1.2, or the equivalent of six miles per gallon. This was really difficult to find. It seems like in the industry, uh, truck makers don't talk a lot about drag coefficient, probably because they're terribly inefficient knowing that it's six miles per gallon. Now, when I was doing my research, I did see that Daimler, which makes Freightliner, had a concept truck that did twice that at 12, 12 and a half miles per gallon. Still incredibly low when you compare it to what Tesla's doing with their vehicles. So the Model S has a 0.24 drag coefficient or about 100 miles per gallon equivalent. The Model X is the same, 0.24 and uh, 90 MPGE. The Model 3 is 0.21, the most efficient car that they make to date. And it's, it's got uh, an equivalent of 126 miles per gallon. So what will Tesla do with the semi truck? How efficient will that vehicle be, what will its drag coefficient be, and what will the miles per gallon equivalent be? I think this is going to be really interesting. You know, if I look at what they've done so far with their with the S, X, and 3, I, I, I'm going to I'm going to guess to say that maybe maybe it will be as efficient as the S, X, and 3 where it's around that 0.24 or better. And the MPGE, man, it would be amazing if they could get 100 miles per gallon equivalent or greater. And it would just it would just blow every competitor out of the water because they're making a 6 to 12 miles per gallon truck that uses uh, fuel. Which brings me into my last topic that I think will be really interesting, which is maintenance. What is a maintenance going to be like in an electric semi truck? Well, let's let's get some sort of basis here. So I found some numbers online, and I'll put the sources in the video description for you. But on average, a truck driver has about fifteen thousand dollars of recurring maintenance to do on a on a truck. That's oil changes, that's any any hoses or brakes. In addition to that, fuel is going to be the most expensive thing on a semi truck. So my understanding is that it costs about $70,000 per year to fuel a, a vehicle, a, a semi truck. And according to my close family member, you're doing an oil change every 300 engine hours. So they base it off of how long the engine has been running, not the number of miles that it travels. But with an electric semi truck, you will not have to maintain the vehicle as much and the cost will reflect that just like with the S, X, and 3. So expect for Tesla at the semi truck announcement to talk a lot about the total cost of ownership and how a, an electric semi truck will be far, far less expensive than a traditional semi truck that requires tons of fluid, gasoline, oil, transmission fluid, and probably a ton of other things. That wraps up my predictions for the Tesla semi truck. Hopefully, you found this information informative to get you ready for the Tesla semi truck event happening on November 16th, 2017. I will definitely be live streaming that. What do you think? What are your thoughts on the Tesla semi truck? Did I miss anything? Did you want to see or hear something that I did not cover? Go ahead and put that in the comments. Would love to see your feedback, and we'll definitely be engaging with those who add their comments. Thanks so much for tuning into this video, and I will see you on the next one.